Yeah. What is up? What is up? Welcome back to another episode of the Science Guy Podcast. I am your co-host, Aya Riley, joined by the always lovely Sky McMillan. Sky, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and I can't wait for this one because I already know how fun it's going to be. We are joined by a UNM legend in his own right. <laughs> His name is Dante Martin. You might have heard of him, uh, seen him on the football field. He was wearing number eight this year and the year before that and the year before that. Unim's all-time PBU record holder, number eight from the state of California, Dante Martin. I appreciate you joining, buddy. I appreciate you having me again. Yeah. Nothing, I, you know, we don't be claiming California like that, but you know, bro, why are you capping on the pod, man? Because I told you, all my family from Texas, we've been through this already. We got to claim Texas out here. No, no, we're claiming California. Uh, if you guys don't know, Dante was our first ever interviewee that we uh did for the Science Guy podcast. If you haven't Go check that out. If you haven't, you're you're lagging. You're way behind. <laughs> but it's great to have him back on the pod. And we're just gonna, you know, open it up on the on the icebreaker question. Waffles or pancakes? Mmm, that's hard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Honestly, they don't they taste different too. I don't know how some people be saying like it tastes the same, but I ain't gonna lie, waffles be going crazy. Waffles might be my waffles gonna take it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sky, what about you? I'm torn. I usually would have said waffles, but I just had the best pancakes ever this weekend. So I feel like it's pancakes right now Where'd until I have. Um, I had it at this brunch place called The Terrace. So good. Best p- pancakes I've ever had. I I have not heard of that place, but I'm going to go with Dante. We're going to go to Waffle House. You know <laughs> You know, Dante, look, look, Lopo Nation. This is this is how you know Dante's capping. Because we just talked about, he thought I was in New Mexico. I told him I'm in Cali. I said, we could pull up and go to Roscoe's. He said, where's, how far is that from his house? That's how you know he, he should be claiming Cali right now. But he's trying to over here fake it and say like he's Wait, from what? Texas. What? <laughs> Wait, how do you put that together? Like, all right. It didn't make sense. All right. <laughs> all right. Anyways, Dante, how have pre-draft workouts been coming along for you? Uh, any off-season injuries or bruises that you had to get healed up? Nah. All my all the little nicks and pains that I had, I had healed up by the end of the season towards like the, once we got to like Fresno State and what, Utah State, I believe. That I was solid back, I was solid for then. But the workouts have been... Uh, I would say I started doing my pro day training. I started a little bit late because I was trying to get my agent situation all figured out and all that stuff. But then I came a little bit late to that, but everything worked out the best as it could. So, and then all the workouts have been going fine. I've been, I was driving like every day. I would say it was like two hours there and then two hours back just to work out in LA. But uh, you got to get it how you get it. What does a pre-draft workout look like for you? It all depends on who you go to to train for. But for me, I went to TNT. We would, um, it's either you'll lift, we'll lift first, like at four. I, I would have to wake up at like 4 a.m. to get there on time because we'll lift there at six. Dang. And then we'll hit the field after that. And then after, and then once you get done with that, then we're done with the workout. Uh, unless you did like your position drills and all that stuff and whoever you worked out with like on the side by yourself but then on the the days I would just go straight to the high school wake up at five get there at seven then we'll do all our sprint training and all that then we hit the weight room you always got to hit the weight room now yeah TNT is top-notch uh training facility in San Dimas California again <laughs> uh CJ Montez former Lobo uh trained there. Uh, his father runs it. My boy DG works out. He I don't know if you caught him there or not, Dante. Oh, you he, knew him? Yes. We oh, bro, he what? went to Palisades before bro, he transferred. You said said something. He should have said something because I brought up a I brought up Dion because Dion went to Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, bro. He's, that's yeah. My, yeah, that's my boy DG. You mustn't really uh, not be from California. He ain't saying nothing right, about you, son. All right. 
All right. Come on now, right. man. All right. But <laughs> well, let's talk about your pro day a little bit. You kind of mentioned it. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to find, <laughs> you know, the the numbers, but I saw anywhere uh, fr- from a four five, four six, four yard dash, a four four twenty yard shuttle. You know, how do you feel about your pro day numbers? Um, and what are the official numbers, man? All right. What I'm gonna say is I ain't gonna speak too much on it. I feel like I didn't I didn't warm up all the way properly, and I feel like we rushed it a little bit too, because like, this is only three of us. It's only Jeremiah yeah. and me and Tito, so it was like. We really got through it fast, and I believe, like, we had the date scheduled on the 20th of March. Yeah, the 20th of March, but we moved it to the 25th the same day as New Mexico State. So I guess Mm. the scouts had to hit us and then hit New Mexico State the same day. I'm not for sure, but, yeah, the... I definitely should have been in the the four four range because everybody that I was working out with was hitting four fours, but I'd hit, like, a... What was it? Four six on some crazy stuff, but I ain't gonna... I'll take it though. Hey, I'm still up. Hey, you know I'm gonna make it where I need to go. <laughs> How do you handle that when you know you're you thinking that you're supposed to be running a four four in the low four fours and you get a number like four six? Like, what type of adjustments do you try and make, or you know, how do you go into meetings with NFL teams and and talk to them about that? So the, that was the thing. So me, when I was talking to my agent, like, cause Jeremiah had, I was texting Jeremiah on Instagram once we first got our numbers. And he had said, he said that when he had told his agent his number, he said his, uh, his agent said, that's good for the code. But I'm thinking like, yeah, we did do pretty good for being out there in the code because we didn't use the indoor. But for most of the part, we're, we're going to try to get local pro days, but I don't live close enough, like in the range of a facility or of an NFL team to do a local pro day. So it's mostly just teams are going to have to take, they can just watch my film on. So you can cut my film on and see like, I'm nowhere near four, six at all. Every, I haven't ran a four, six since high school. So, but it is what it is. And I was, I ain't gonna lie. When I first got it, I was depressed. I was like, really? <laughs> like, that's crazy. But Hey, I got over it and I just put my head down, kept on working. What is some of the mental preparation you've been doing to get ready for this transition? Mm, I would say, because most people get caught up in the process of like, what if they go lower than what they're expecting themselves to go? Like some people get ranged out like to be day one or day two or day three, day three undrafted free agent, stuff like that. But for me, the most part, I've just been like, it doesn't matter for me as long as the team takes a, gives me an opportunity to prove myself that I know I can perform on the next level with those guys. So it's not nothing like my mental. I've been good this whole time. I'm not worried about anything. I'm. Just, I know I'll put the work in, and they can watch my film. Some the coaches have been telling me they like my film, so I don't got nothing to worry about. I just know once I get out there, I just got to showcase what I've been showing on film my whole life. We talked in our first episode with you about becoming UNM's all-time PBU record holder, and you accomplished that. What was that feeling like for you? I know. You know, it was a stat correction, so we didn't even know that you had got it, you know, until we had landed off the plane. And they're like, yeah, Dante's now the PBU record holder yeah. from Fresno State. And it's like, dude, like, what happened? So we couldn't even enjoy it, you know, in the yeah. moment. What was that feeling like for you and the fam? Uh, Like, everybody was more excited than I was. Honestly, I was just going out there and just playing football. That's what I love to do. Like, the numbers, numbers are going to come and go. It doesn't matter to me. Is the numbers gonna keep on stacking? And I thought about it like I think my mom had said something to me. Uh, I believe it was who was week three after week three that we had played. The our 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 fourth game that was UMass. Our fourth yeah, game was UMass. Yeah, she was talking to me and she's saying, "Uh, that you're probably not gonna you're not you're not gonna break the record if they're not throwing the ball to your side." But I was like, "I'm not worried about it." Like. It, I knew I was gonna break it. Honestly, they're not, there's no way like a team is just not gonna throw the ball my way for. I don't even know how much I needed at that time, but hey, I knew so then it, the play is gonna come and I was gonna make the play. It didn't matter to me. You lucky because I would have been testing your behind if I was behind the center. I'm throwing to your side every single time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so you know better for real. Go ahead, Sky. <laughs> um, if you get the call, we all hope and expect you get. What do you think that feeling will be like? Ooh. 
See, my mom was joking around with me the other day downstairs. She was like, I don't even think you'll be excited or she don't think I would show emotion if I got drafted or anything like that. But honestly, I don't know what's I uh, like, I don't know what I would do. Okay. <laughs> honestly, I just don't know. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll be this, I'll be excited for sure though. <laughs> now 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 this is gonna come out during um the NFL draft process. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what what couple of NFL teams have been, you know, on your radar, on your agent's radar? Like, who are you when they're on the clock? You're like, all right, this might be it. Mm. So I'll just talk about, like, how it started. Uh, I just, So for the most part, like, when I was first, when I first got my agent, like, we didn't know anything because, like, all the coaches had, like, got fired and all that. So I had, a, so I had hit up Coach Ref. I was like, Hey, do you remember all the teams that came to see me like during like during practices and stuff like that or throughout the season? He's like, no, but I remember like the coaches were like when the coach guy came, he was really interested in me. And he was talking to him. Uh, but for the most part, and then he told me Coach Baker might have all that list and stuff like that. So I hit a hit up Coach Baker and he hit up Ben and then he had gave me all the list of the teams. And it was mostly teams that didn't have like solidified corners right now or like a solidified corner core. So that was very interesting to me too. And then I was talking to my agent and he is, he is excited to see like what teams are looking at me. He's like, all those are good fits for me. But for right now, let me see, let me look at my text again. Cause he had told me, I'll be forgetting that it's bad for I have bad memory, but I remember I got, I got on the phone call with the Rams, uh, the Rams DB coach. It was Monday. I believe yeah, it was Monday. And then he was telling me he liked my film and all that. Talking about where I was getting a, where I was evaluated at day three. I was either a day three or undrafted free agent for them. And that's for most teams. So that just helps you like once one team puts like pressure, then other teams have to put pressure too if they want you. And he's talking about I said I think it was the Rams, the Chiefs, and the Seahawks had had me on their board. So we'll see. And there's probably other teams too, but just haven't came out and said anything or approached me about it yet. But and we'll see within these next few days. Being a corner and possibly playing, I guess, NFL teams in the future, who would be like your dream matchup, I guess, like a wide receiver to play against in a game? Mm. I'll say DK and I'll say Justin Jefferson. Okay. Those are good ones. Yeah. Good yeah, I'm starting them on my fantasy team. That week. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Let me ask you, because there's not that many players available to us. When Coach G, you know, entered and, and, and Bob Davey left, mm -hmm. um, what was that transition like for you? And then also, what should new players now with Coach G leaving and Coach Mendenhall stepping in? What should they expect? What are some advice tidbits that you give them for returning players and new players players stepping into a transition in, in leadership? Yes, yeah, so I would say coming off of that season, like uh out there with Davey, I I had good stats. I was like, I think I was like the top five in the top five for uh, press man coverage as, as a cornerback in the whole nation. So now I was thinking like I have good film right now, and I could just hit the portal and just see where I land at. Just because Davey left, and that, like that was the how to say the group of coaches that had recruited me, and that was like the team I was comfortable playing with and all that. And my mom had asked me when I came home that winter break. She's like, "Are you gonna transfer? Or are you gonna stay?" I was like, "No, I'm just gonna see what Coach mm, Jerick is calling me right now. I was just gonna see what Coach G was uh, had to say, um, like what he was looking like." So, yeah, and that's why. And then when I, and I noticed, like, I don't know, just, yeah, it was just some different type of. And I, when he got here, when he got to New Mexico, at first I didn't really know the thing about him and all that, but really just, like, how do you say it? Warmed up to him, I guess you could say. Yeah. Because I'm mostly, everybody knows I'm a quiet person, so people really don't know what I'm thinking or anything like that unless I say it. Yeah, Dante is a a, a quiet person. Oh my god! Hey, I forgot. I forgot. To, I forgot to say the advice. Oh, I would say. I would say to the guys. <laughs> he does. He, he did say he, he had short term memory. Like, yeah, yeah. Said his memory's bad. <laughs> All I would say to the guys that's there now, 
either because the transfer the transfer portal was way different back then. It's like if I would transfer, then I would lost the lost the season. I wouldn't be able to play like right away. But like if you transfer now, they are able to play right away. We just don't feel like he's the right fit for you. But I say just give the guy a chance, see what he can do. I I personally like once I got there the pro day like. I don't think I, I didn't talk to any of the coaches for real until I talked to because I got there I, I got there like Wednesday or Wednesday the week before just so I can get like uh I can get used to the the altitude again yeah but I just started doing little workouts in there started doing runs on the field but then the first person that came to introduce himself to me was the the strength coach coach Blackjack yeah there you go. What are your thoughts on New Mexico's upcoming season and the different teams they're playing now because of the conferences splitting up? I feel like that would be that would be better for them because a strength and schedule. You, I guess you're playing. What are they playing? Oregon State and Washington State now. Yeah, and yeah. then they're also playing Arizona. This they yes, play Arizona I'm pretty first. Sure, don't yeah, they? Week one. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they got Arizona and Auburn. If I'm not mistaken, Chase Auburn too. Yeah, and then I think uh, they have Washington State on their schedule as well. Yeah. Okay, but tell us what you think about the realignment process, dude. Realignment? You talking about the conferences? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't even know how it is now. I haven't even been paying attention because I'm not in college. Yeah, there's no, there's no Pac-12 no more, but I haven't been paying attention because I'm not in college no more. But I know that the Pac-12 isn't a thing no more. I think it's going to suck for other teams, though. Like... Being a soccer player, I think the conference is splitting up. And now that California teams have to travel to the middle of the country, it's going to suck because we travel from Wednesday to Sunday. You guys only travel from Friday, Saturday. Wait, I thought the Pac-12 was only like a football thing. That's for everybody? I'm pretty positive. Mm. I heard that they're trying to stay there just to try to like revamp it or something like that. But I'm not for sure how all that's going to go. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Well, I guess we'll see in the future. What advice do you have for new and returning players coming into the program as you were both here before Coach G arrived for Coach Davey? Don't take college for granted or don't don't take any day for granted, honestly. Like, you really, if you're trying to make it to the NFL, like, Jared, then you really had to, or anybody else that's in the NFL, you really got to put in that work. Like, you can't just say that, like, practice is good enough for you to have like NFL talent or have the work ethic to be in the NFL. You really got to put in the work by yourself, get your schoolwork done and focus up, be on the grind. <laughs> in breaking news today, uh, this morning, Reggie Bush got his Heisman back. You know, that's hey. something I feel like a lot of football players been trying. A lot of college football players been saying, hey, give him his Heisman back. When, <laughs> when you first... Well, I don't know. Did you know about that before I just said it? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. So what was your first reaction uh, to it when you saw it? I just kind of looked at it. I didn't say anything, but hey, Reggie Bush is my favorite player, though, so good for him. <laughs> I, used to, I used to model my game after Reggie Bush, man. They used to say I look like him. I play like him and stuff like that. Come on now. <laughs> Dante. <laughs> Dante, you was playing. Did you ever play running back? Yeah, at uh, Pop Warner. Uh, that's why they moved you to DB. That's why they mm, I, didn't play, I didn't play I didn't play DB until I got oh well, actually I no I did I played every position on the field I played quarterback tight end running back uh receiver and cornerback honestly yeah you try to play linebacker for 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 us they said you was too small that never that no, never happened yeah that always happened Coach, Coach yeah. Long like Coach Long when he came to talk to me I was like he pulled me aside on one of the practice he's like side he's soft so like we're gonna need <laughs> Dante need to step in. look listen every time we walking out to practice Dante over here talking about yeah I'm gonna go where the big dogs are ooh, 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 ooh. I'm gonna go where the big dogs and you then you see we're warming up for practice Dante over there doing ladders and stuff getting he's his gonna get ankle a- retaped. Wrist nah, done. And, that's, and that's no, didn't, no, I didn't. No, you ankle tape. I never got my ankle taped ever. That's not a thing. Nah, that's not a nah, thing for me. Nah, nah, that's cap. That's <laughs> cap. That's cap. You gotta get, that's, why you, that's why you don't got fast feet. Y'all don't be hitting the ladder like y'all supposed to. Look, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If we race right now, we put our hands in the dirt. Okay, not you right can, now. Give me, you hurt give me right now. 
Like, exactly. That's what I'm sitting <laughs> out right now. Give me about like four or five months. You know, I could, I could, uh, I can hang. No, I can't hang with you. Too. But I say, you retired now, man. You old. Yeah, I am. It feels like I'm <laughs> looking at my myself in a mirror ten years later. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look, don't do like, him like that. Look, this is the problem. This is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem with Dante Martin, man. Hoodie Dante, if you follow his Instagram, which you probably don't, because he has yeah. no followers. I don't but have followers hoodie, now. Hoodie Dante's his Instagram <laughs> account. Just go ahead and you know shoot him a, a a DM and a follow. Tell him that you uh you're following him because of the Science Guy podcast. <laughs> okay. Sorry, man, you, you've been hey, you've been gone. Like, I, I've, been, I've been watching the podcast. I was like, <laughs> hey, hey, your name hey. on the podcast? Where are you at? Hey. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Because Dante want to live in the past and stuff. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, but you know what? Go ahead and talk about, you know, your family and the support and system that they've been. Obviously, your brother being that role model for you, also helping you in the sport and uh, pushing you to do football and things like that outside of your your norm. Talk about how much of, of support your family's been during this entire process. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can I say first? Because... I believe, wait, I didn't have the the agent like at the start when I started training. So I just paid it out of pocket. My mom had helped me pay for all that. So then it's a great blessing for her to do that for me. But obviously, you know, I'm going to pay her back. I don't like how, like, knowing that someone paid something for me that didn't pay them back. So I always got to pay people back to the fullest. Might even put, you know, I might got some interest on that for a little bit too, you know. But no, nah, my whole family's been a great support. They're more nervous for this process than me. I'm just excited to see what <laughs> happens during when the draft is coming up right now. But for the most part, uh, they've just been very supportive. I don't think my brother didn't even know I had a, like, I was going to train in L.A. I don't even know what he thought I was doing. Like, I don't know. <laughs> he had told me one day, he's like, you have a trainer? I was like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. and it's probably because you from Texas, right? That's why he's like, why are you going to Los Angeles, right? No, that's mm. not what. No, he just he be he be on his he be on his TikTok grind and he be on a he be work he be going to work too. So he don't really got all that time to know what everybody else is doing around him sometimes. Well, thank you so much, Dante, for joining us uh, for this episode. You started with us and now you're ending with us, which is kind of cool. So wish you is the best of luck. Episode? Yeah. Ooh, we have one more, sorry. but this is our last guest that we're having on this episode. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> what Dante? What? They just, hey man, who gonna pick up now? What's gonna be the next one? Well, look, if you watch next week's episode, you'll hear. I can't more get about no. It. I can't get no sneak peek. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll give you a sneak peek because you did come on and you started started us off and you're finishing mm. us mainly because you kept begging me to come on. But uh, <laughs> that's not what happened. That Dante. I you just asked. Like, I casually, Brandon was Wait. recording me when I was yeah. mic'd up. Yeah, and he, he, I just asked you a simple question. You said, "Yeah." Nah, so nah, took. because you have been asking me for like the past like two weeks. <laughs> anyways, anyways, no. So next week, uh, you and along with all of our listeners can look forward to uh, me and Sky recapping what our thoughts were um, about all of our guests that we've had on our favorite episodes, our favorite moments. And yeah, who, who might be taking over the reins after us. So yeah, that's a little tidbit, man, but I appreciate you. a sneak peek. Dante. <laughs> Bro, that is crazy. What, what do you think a sneak peek sounds like? I just thought you were going to just name the people who are taking over because what y'all both y'all both graduated. Now, that's not so. a sneak peek. That's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole dinner. That's the whole dinner. <laughs> It's like an app, like there's no appetizer. I'm just, right, you you go to Buffalo Buffalo you Wild Wings, you get some cheese fries, and then you order yourself, you know what I'm saying? A dang wing 10, 15 piece combo. Like, what are we talking about? I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about right now, but all I'm saying is all I'm saying is you could have gave like a letter of the like it wasn't a gonna letter. be two people, it was gonna wow. be one person. Wow. A through Z. How about that? That's, <laughs> that's I gave you 26 letters. <laughs> And what they they had to kick you? What they gave you the boot or something? Oh my god! You Man, know what? School, the school you ain't even over yet. They really got you up out of there pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see my uh, my my complaint had to reach uh, HR pretty quick, man. So, 
There is no HR. What are we talking about? <laughs> oh, man, you're making my heart hurt, man. Laughing and stuff. <laughs> uh, but nah, man, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. As everybody can tell, man, you're just such a joy to, to talk to. And, you know, it was great to have you as a friend and even better to have you as a teammate. You know, Dante number eight. Remember Instagram, Hoodie Dante. Give him a follow. <laughs> he needs it uh, for his social media and his brands as he goes into the NFL draft, which starts on Thursday, ends on Saturday. And uh, yeah, man, we'll we'll be looking forward to hearing your name call. I know uh, when it gets called, man, I'm about to blow you up. And remember, you also owe me $5 million, just FYI. <laughs> what? But, uh, That's the we whole appreciate contract. you. Chase, just get ready to 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 mute him real quick. What? I, I appreciate you for coming on, man. And uh, you all you already know, man. We fam. I'm gonna start a GoFundMe for everybody. That, everybody that follows me is gonna be a GoFundMe that's gonna pop up. We're getting side new foot. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dante Martin. Ah, man, Sky. Man, there's something wrong with that guy. <laughs> That was another great episode. I know. <laughs> An- another great episode. It was yep. great to have him start it, start it off. It was great to have him finish it yep. as well. Uh, we look forward to all the Lobos getting their name called this weekend. Dante Martin, obviously. Tito and Jeremiah Hickson. We look forward to those three guys getting their name called and experiencing a moment of a lifetime. But man, that was fun. Obviously, Dante made us tease what next week is going to be like for us, but, you know, you can't miss that one either. Nope. The final episode. Yeah. Well, that was Dante Martin for Sky McMillan. I'm Cy Riley, and yeah, till next week. Go Lobos. Go Lobos. Go Lobos.